eBay Guide to 2020. Uh, if you clicked on this video, it's because you're interested in MTG and eBay. Maybe you've seen the great deals that you can find, but you're also a little bit leery because you've heard that people have been screwed over. Or maybe you are well-versed in eBay and you're just here to listen to what I have to say and compare notes. Either way, you're in the right place. The video starts right now. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake and welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel, Our Magic. Today we're talking about the eBay 2020 guide to not getting screwed over. Before we get into the video, if you're interested in this kind of information, consider liking and consider subscribing. This really helps the channel as we continue to grow. If you feel especially compelled to help somebody out, please consider sharing this if you think there's somebody that could benefit from it. At Jake and Joel, we cover a lot of different formats of MTG. On the MTG Arena, we cover Brawl and Standard. We also cover Commander and Pioneer. If you're interested in MTG news, or you just want to watch us crack some packs, consider subscribing as well. So here it is, the 2020 guide to eBay and not getting screwed over or scammed. Really quick, I'm not going to be covering taxes, I'm not going to be covering international shipping, I'm not going to be covering returns or like how to do packaging. What I'm going to be covering in this video is specifically how to buy with confidence and what to look for and and popular scams like ways that people are going to take advantage of you and how that you can buy with confidence i've been using ebay since 1999 and i have a feedback rating of 100 percent on over 2500 transactions or something like that so I have made eBay a really successful thing for me, and as far as MTG goes, you can find some cards for a really good price. One example off the top of my head was shortly after Modern Masters 2017 came out, I bought a Liliana foil for, I believe, $79, something like that. You have a lot of great opportunity on eBay because people are trying to unload cards for the lowest possible price, and if you're there and you know what to look for, you can really use that to benefit and help grow your collection. This is not eBay, it is Amazon, but this is the most important tool that you can have and as you can see, it is very inexpensive. This is a jeweler's loop. This is the exact item that I have. It costs $10.29. It allows me to look at cards really close up. The most important thing when you're buying high-end cards is that you're able to identify whether or not they are real or fake. When you're on eBay, eBay has a really good money-back guarantee if the item you received is counterfeit. So there are a lot of different tests that you can do to determine whether or not a card is fake, but the test that I swear by is the green dot test. There's other tests like the Ben test and light test. We're not gonna cover any of those. We're gonna talk about why you're buying the jeweler's loop, which is what I'm showing you here on Amazon, and it's so that you can get pictures like these. The first image that I'm going to show you is a revised Badlands. This is the green dot on the back of the Magic card. There's uh, the five colors of Magic that are all in a pattern right in the center of the back of the card. This is the green dot. And is as you can see here in the illuminated section of the green dot, there are four distinct red dots. You have to have a, a jeweler's loop in order to see these, but this is the big thing that counterfeiters can't get right. And you can just see, and once you've looked at a lot of cards close up, you can see these rosette patterns. This card is from Revised. It's a Badlands. I, I'm showing you this because it's a, it, with some of the newer cards, the red L, the four dots and the red L, is harder to see on some cards. So what I'm going to show you right now is a foil Japanese Royal Scions. So this is a brand new card, fresh off the press. But you can see here, even though it is faint, it does have the, the four red dots. Now sometimes one of the dots will be missing, but the most important thing is to know, and I, and I do wish I had a fake card so that I could show you the difference, but the, the difference is drastic. You're going to see the rosette patterns are going to be all off. Uh, these What I mean when I say rosettes is it's this, this section, these distinct patterns. One thing that you can do to make sure that you're not getting screwed over is to carry cards in a binder. Like if you're trading for something from Alpha or Beta or Unlimited, something old, then have an old jank card, have a common or an uncommon, something where you can bring out your jeweler's loop, 
and you can compare it side by side. You can go, oh, the, the rosette patterns match here. Or honestly, the green dot test is the, the tried and true. It's what I always look at first. I'm like, oh, I see the four distinct red dots. That's A-OK -okay in my book, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and talk about our bootleg MTG. Now I did a video on these guys. If you wanna watch the video on it, uh, I'll go ahead and throw it up in the cards right now. But we're just gonna go over there and very briefly, I'm gonna show you why you need to have a jeweler's loop, even if you're trading at your LGS. On Reddit, that is our bootleg MTG. This is a community of 8.9 thousand members. But uh, let's just go to new using a barbecue smoker to yellow slash age cards. I, I haven't even been to this site today, but what I can tell you about these guys is um, some of the players here are, are here for kitchen table purposes. They just want high quality proxies that they can play uh, at their kitchen table. But a lot of the people are, what is more passable? The BL Lil Liliana of the Veil vale or the UC Renin 6? BL is one of the sellers and UC is another one of the sellers. These are bootleggers that make popular cards. But just know that the fakes the fake cards exist at pretty much any rarity. You may you may have clicked on this video and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the only cards that get counterfeited are, you know, Power 9 or old vintage cards. That's not really the case. People are always looking for cheap versions of, of what is passable. A lot of the people at our bootleg MTG are here that are trying to acquire cards so that they can play in real money tournaments, cards that aren't gonna be detectable as fake when being played in sleeves. So if you wanna check out our bootleg MTG, I, I threw that video up in the cards or you can search for it, but that's it, you just need to know there are Modern Horizons, brand new cards. They've already talked about uh, counterfeiting secret layer cards. They've already counterfeited the borderless extended cards from Throne of Eldraine. So just know that that exists and just because a card is newer doesn't necessarily mean that it's authentic, which is why you need the jeweler's loop. It's the best $11 investment that you're ever gonna get off Amazon. Let's move away from our bootleg MTG and let's go back to eBay. So I just talked all about the jeweler's loop. Let's go in and search for a popular card. Let's say MTG Scalding Tarn. What I like to search in my filters is buy it now and then lowest price plus shipping. That's going to show you for a shipped price what card is the cheapest. I don't know why. Oh, because this is sponsored. All right, so here's the cheapest Scalding Tarn after shipping. Modern Masters 2017. We go in here and we look. This is a new seller, okay? This seller is 100% positive feedback, but only on four transactions. But then when we go in here, we see, oh, Verdant Catacombs, Scalding Tarn, Packed and it, packed Well, Extremely Fast Shipping. Uh, so this checks out. I would be able to buy this card knowing, okay, I'm probably not going to get sent a fake card. So when a seller has a 100% feedback rating, that means that you can most likely buy the card and feel satisfied. And that's as simple as clicking on the user over here, the seller information. So you, you've came here, you've clicked on Scalding Tarn. And now you've come over here, you see the seller info, you click on them, and then you can review their feedback. That's the very first thing that I always do when I'm buying cards is I look at the feedback rating. If the feedback rating is 100%, most likely it's going to be legit. So now I want to talk about a, a seller, somebody who takes advantage, and we're going to continue talking about feedback rating. So let's go into my saved sellers, and it's 1UP Gaming. So they're no longer a registered user, which is actually great. It's not great for the video, but it's great for the community. Uh, I was going to show you what they were doing as far as um, scamming people. I may still be able to show you uh, exactly what they were doing. But essentially, I want to talk about that number, that feedback rating number. So here's the thing. This person has a 91.5% feedback rating, okay? So if you're new to eBay, you may see that and be like, oh, that's like an A, right? Well, actually, it's like an F minus. It's like uh, it's a very, very, very poor feedback rating. Normally, I like to deal with people that have 100% feedback rating or at minimum like a 98 or 99% or higher. And all of that has to do with their number of transactions. If somebody has a 90% feedback rating, typically something I would never deal with, but it's for only 10 transactions, meaning nine out of 10 transactions went well, 
I'm going to look through their feedback and I'm going to see, oh, one person just was unhappy that the item arrived late. That means that most likely you're going to be able to buy that item with confidence knowing that this person, 90% of the time, has got their items out on time and their customers are happy. It's just a new account. It's a baby account. If someone has hundreds of transactions or thousands and they have a 90% feedback rating, that means that a lot of people are having problems and most likely you should avoid that seller. So let's go in here. One Up Gaming has 91.5% positive feedback. So I've just told you, and based on what I've said, like this is a really, really poor feedback rating. So let's go into their, their um, feedback and um, specifically clicking on negative feedback here we can look at all their feedback and that's what becomes more troubling but let's see what what is going on here so their negative feedback sells fake cards sells fake cards sold me fake verdant catacombs sell uh seller shipped counterfeit cards so for someone like me that's experienced this is immediately a red flag i immediately know okay this account is just like compromised the person has no morals they're just selling whatever and then this is the problem is you go into their positive feedback and you see all of the people that are getting screwed over their items for sale the way that this account worked before this account got banned is they would sell low-end magic cards that are real like dollar cards two dollar cards ten dollar cards then they would sell books that are real just books random books cheap books and then they would sell cards that you can find on our bootleg MTG high-end fakes. So what they're doing is they're bolstering their feedback rating by, by selling authentic cheap cards in books. And then the people who are like, no, you sent me a, a fake card and they leave negative feedback, that negative feedback gets drowned out by all of the positive feedback that's coming from the books and the cheap cards. So this is a very predatory account for new players. If you're a new player, and you are buying cards, you may at a glance think that a 91% feedback rating is good, and then you're buying a card, and I'm here to tell you 91% is bad, and this person has been removed because they were selling fake cards, and that's great for the community. So now what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you about random lots. So I have this item saved. It was an item that I was watching, but it was an item that I was never gonna buy, and uh, I hope that it still exists. Yes, it does. All right, so this ended, and keep in mind this ended with 32 bids. This was an auction, and uh, it ended at $836. So let's go and see if we can see uh, the original listing. I really hope that we can. All right, so here's the original listing, okay? Magic the Gathering Deckmaster Trading Card Toys Collection. This comes from... Uh, a seller with a hundred percent feedback rating, but when you go in, it's a Nutribullet, Pokemon Fire Crystal, uh, MTG Stinkweed Imp. Uh, these are just a few. Let's go for twelve months. Uh, great communication, and then it becomes more uh, more clear. The thing about eBay is, um, or it becomes more vague. And the thing about eBay is that as time passes, your feedback starts to disappear. Like stuff, like you don't see what they were a great buyer for or whatever, but you can see this, this person has a 100% feedback rating. But let's go back to the item and what it looks like is, okay, this is just some old cards, right? Okay, that, that could be a collection. Oh, what is this, just a bunch of cards? Okay, and then we go to this picture, all right, and this is this is where the scam is, all right, in my opinion, and, you know, I'm not trying to shame this, this account, because we're going to go down to the description, but what is the big thing that sticks out in this picture? And if you haven't seen it by now, I'm going to tell you it's the Mox Ruby in the top right. The card up there in the top right, the artifact. So there's just what looks like a near mint beta mox ruby hanging out in a, a lot of just a bunch of jank. But it's put in such a way where it's like most of the people that are looking at collections like this are going, oh, wait, that's a mox ruby. Do they not know it's a Mox Ruby? And now all of a sudden I'm bidding on it. And so keep in mind the price of a Mox Ruby is much more than $836. So even the people that inevitably bidded on this item were not super confident. And let's go down to 
uh, the description of the item. Magic the Gathering Deckmaster Trading Card Toys Collection Condition is used, shipped with USPS. I'm cleaning out my uncle's garage. He had a massive collection of Magic the Gathering Deckmaster car deck cards. There must be hundreds of them. He used to play in tournaments and stuff. Neither of my kids are into trading cards, so I'm selling them one box at a time. I pulled some out at random for the picture. One of them's a Mox Ruby. It doesn't say that, but uh, there are tons more. This would make an awesome Christmas gift for someone who's into Magic the Gathering. Boxes much smaller than this are going for $20 at Walmart. Anyway, thanks for looking. God bless America and have a great day. Okay, so they do an update on October 12th. Uh, the individual cards that are in the picture are just a random sample from this collection and may not be in the same box. I don't have the time to sort through this many individual cards, so I'm just selling as boxes of random stuff. So that is just like, are you are you telling me this guy just has a Mox Ruby that just happened to be sitting here with all, the, all of these cards? There's a reason I didn't bid on this. When it's too good to be true, that's that's the big thing. I'm going to put it in words on the screen. When it's too good to be true, it probably is. That's a, that's a random rule of thumb. As you scour, like one of the things that I like to do is I like to save the, the search Magic the Gathering Deckmaster cards. That's what the random person who is looking at Magic cards, who, who just picks up the card and goes, I don't know what this is, and flips it over, and they go, Magic the Gathering Deckmaster cards. That's what it says. That's what it says on the card. So if you go here, and this is a, a little tip from me to you, but I like to go, buy it now, newly listed for this. And you can save. You can go into eBay. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but what you can do is you can save searches. That way you get a notification. If somebody lists Magic the Gathering Deckmaster cards, I get a notification on my phone, and then I get to go there and I get to look. Because I have I have actually struck gold buying collections on eBay. I bought a collection for $150 on eBay, and uh, I am going to be posting a video on the channel, but it came out to like $1,800 in value when when it was all said and done like full authentic cards so you can go through and you you can look through here at these buy it nows um like you'll just see like okay this is just like a bunch of jank but oh strategically placed full art island to maybe help this sell if you're interested in buying cards on ebay magic the gathering deck master cards that's where i have seen some of the the big deals all right so we've talked about the jeweler's loop we've talked about a couple scams i want to talk about repacks repacks i find to be the most predatory thing for new players so if you're a new player and you're new to ebay please listen now because when you look at at ebay you're going to see a lot of people with like like look at this picture and this is a sponsored auction with 253 items sold and these repacks are $5 and 55 cents and obviously the picture is of a bunch of this in this instance a bunch of collector's edition stuff and what looks like some unlimited power <clears throat> and then just like a bunch of random jank and then like a picture of like they went to their local game store and just took a bunch of pictures of really high-end stuff and then they're gonna have a robust thing about each repack contains this and this and this and if you buy five or more, you get an extra. I'm just going to tell you, take these with a grain of salt. This this is like, it goes back to the rule that I've already said before. If it is too good to be true, it most likely is. So you can go to this person's feedback and you can see they're at 99.6% feedback. This is a, a seller that I don't, I don't really particularly care for very much. But let's go to their, uh, so we see their, their positive feedback. Random pull, great seller, item is described, paid $16 for $3 worth of cards. It's a lottery, it is what it is. The proof is in the pudding. There's going to be people that leave positive feedback, but they're like, oh, I didn't pull anything good. Foil, 50 cent, rare. Card came as described, did not get much value. As, as a player, let's go to the negative here. Actually, let's go to negative and neutral. Here's neutral. Was it worth the value? Arrived in good shape, thanks. Lotto's a lotto didn't hit. 
I felt misled and spent way more for pulling than actual value. Good luck. Didn't expect anything good. More bothered by the condition. Good communication good communication i just said zero luck is all 40 bucks and no card over 50 cents or or anything interesting not what i expected eh okay cards i got a week 32 cent foil was worth the risk uh i should have caught this one my fault didn't expect much didn't get much so you can see like this this seller is posting pictures of power but they're never going to give you power they're just going to milk you and not send it out. However, let's go back and do the same search again, MTG repack, but we're going to go buy it now and we're going to go price plus shipping highest first. If you are the kind of person that wants a repack, super elite, high end MTG repacks, Black Lotus Power 9, this is $425 plus seven bucks. This person has 99.6% positive feedback. Let's see what they boast in the video. We see a bunch of power. We see uh, uh, what looks like a beta or an alpha underground C. They have a picture of a paper. I'm sure this represents how many repacks there are. For sale are some super elite high-end MTG repacks. These are great repacks with awesome cards. Each pack contains 18 cards of the following. Three alpha cards, three beta cards, three unlimited cards, one the dark card, one Arabian Nights card, one Legends card, one Antiquities, five cards from alpha to current. Look at the chart and the images and pick a number one to 250. They also have a buy three, get one free. Send me a message, a message with your number and your purchase. One in 20 repacks contains a Power 9 card, and some contain a PSA or a BGS graded card, some repacks in addition. So even though this is very expensive, I would have more confidence purchasing this. Let's go into their feedback. So Alpha Berserk, as advertised, buyer beware, better odds with lottery. Yes, yes. It's going to be the same kind of stuff. Awesome deal for amazing seller. Fast shipping, modern staples, and stated light player X, X condition. Let's go to the good repacks as usual. Repacks, great buy, excellent cards, and quick delivery would recommend. I'm only reading repacks, the 425 here. Good cards, fast shipping, good packaging. Arrived on time and seller has very open communication. Nice guy, great cards. And what we're looking for here is we're trying to find... Did somebody pull something good? Four packs, best card is a heavily played beta, BK, AB cards, alpha and beta cards, all in HP, multiple duplications. This person got a beta white knight. Honestly though, even, you know, after trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because it's expensive, it still seems like just so dicey. So if you are going on eBay, you're going to see a lot of people that are going to offer like too good to be true kind of scenarios. And I'll, I'll say it again. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. So you found a high-end card on eBay and now you're ready to purchase it. This is what you need to do. Click on the card. Look at the seller. 100% positive feedback rating. Most likely, you're not going to get screwed over. Guy's Cradle, light played and played uh, moderately played Urza Saga, Magic the Gathering reserve list, condition is used. Ship the USPS first class package. So USPS first class package is going to ensure that your item is tracked when it is shipped. And that's going to be really important. And we'll talk more about like when you're a seller toward the end of the video, we'll briefly go over a couple of those things. So say this item was being sold by this seller, but they don't have a 100% feedback rating. This is when your jeweler's loop is going to be important and you may want to reach out to them. You'll be able to click on their name. You look at their items for sale. Go to their Gaia's Cradle. This is the item that we want to buy hypothetically. And we're going to contact the seller. So now we can ask them questions about this card. We can ask them for details, shipping questions. I can just ask them details about the card and say they didn't have a 100% feedback rating. I would say, okay, let's, uh, let's contact the seller. And now I'm going to say, would you kindly send me a picture of the green dot using a jeweler's loop? And then if this seller knows anything about authentic magic cards, most likely they're going to be able to provide that picture to you. They give you an option to add photos here. And so once they send you that picture and you have that for your records, then once they send the card, if you were to say, no, this is fake, and you could take your own picture, you could compare You could compare your picture of what they send with what they sent you. This just gives you an added layer of security when you're buying high-end cards. It's a lot of money. There's a lot of money going on in Magic the Gathering. But I'm just saying, like, having that in your back pocket, the jeweler's loop, seriously, 
$11. Learn the green dot test. You're never going to be screwed over for the rest of your life. There's a lot of people that are going to fear monger and they're going to tell you that eBay is not a great place to buy cards, that it's a, a cesspool and that um, everybody's scamming. And I can tell you with confidence in, in years of experience that if you know what to look for and you know who to deal with, you can find some amazing deals on eBay and great ways to grow your collection. A lot of the time on eBay, people are selling cards for way under the market price just because they want to move something. And you have the opportunity to find random collections that can really be just like, there's tons of hidden gems. Really quick, before we end the video, I want to talk about things that you need to remember as a seller. If you are trying to sell cards on eBay, this is what you need to know. The most important thing is to ship your item with tracking. If it is an expensive card, and you need to determine to yourself what you believe expensive is. For me particularly, if I am shipping a card to somebody that is $20 or more, I am going to send it first class package with tracking. Now you can do that at the post office. You could tell them, I wanna ship this item first class package with tracking, or you can go on PayPal where you could save some money and do it on there. I'm not gonna show you how to ship the item. There's plenty of tutorials. But if you go on PayPal, you're going to end up saving about a dollar on the shipping cost and you're going to get the same service. So if you are shipping cards that are high end, I do recommend you save money by choosing PayPal. You can print your own shipping label. You can do all of your packaging at your house. And then when you get there, you can just drop it off and you've saved money. What the tracking does is it's going to allow you to see when the item is delivered. I have, and this is really sad, but I have sent out a Mox Opal. Uh, at the time I sold it, it was about $65. And I sent it out in a plain white envelope with just a stamp. Even though I don't believe them, the seller claimed the item never arrived, and I had to, because I could not provide tracking, I had to refund them $65 and eat the loss. So always remember, if you're selling high-end cards, track them. Nine times out of ten, nothing's going to happen. I have one instance where I sent an item, and I know it arrived, and still, they claim that it didn't arrive. And so it is, it is what it is. That is just the cost of doing business. Sometimes mail is going to get lost, but you would rather lose a $10 card than a $100 card and then have to refund that money. It's a lot easier to refund $10 than it is to refund $100. So I'll very quickly talk about how I ship my cards. That way you know the best way to just send a card out. If I'm sending a, a cheap card, I'm gonna send it in just like a small envelope with a stamp. What I like to do is I like to take some packing tape and I like to take a, a piece and I like to fold it over each of the corners. Uh, some people have complained an envelope has arrived ripped. I didn't get any bad feedback for it, but they left me a note in the feedback and ever since then, I always put packing tape over all the corners just to prevent ripping. I also put a piece of tape over the, the address as well. That way, if water, if it's like a rainy day, nothing's going to smudge the address and it's going to make sure that the item makes it. These are Ultra Pro penny sleeves. This is a top loader. This is a bubble mailer, okay? This is just a, a small bubble mailer. This is what I like to do for high-end cards. I like to put a card. Let's go this card. Boom. I like to put the card upside down in a penny sleeve, and then I like to take the card in the penny sleeve, put it in the top loader. Once we have it like this, I like to take some scotch tape, tape it just straight onto the back, but then what I like to do is I like to fold this over. I create a pull tab for my, my uh, buyer. That way when they get the card, it arrives like this. It's not moving around in there. I like to put the card in the top loader or in the uh, penny sleeve upside down. That way the top of the penny sleeve is protecting it. If the card moves around in shipping, the top of the card isn't gonna hit into my tape. The top of the penny sleeve is protecting it from doing that. I just put it in just like this. A person would have to be seriously insane. Sometimes they get cards that arrive and they're taped up in a bunch of cardboard. Like you don't have to do that. This is enough. The card is in a top loader, it's in a penny sleeve, there's a piece of tape protecting it from moving around. When they get the card, they could simply use this pull tab. It's easy. Now I don't have to pick at a bunch of tape, I don't have to try to pull the top apart to, to break the tape across. Like, it's just, it's good to go, 
It's user friendly. There's a pull tab. Same thing with this that I talked about with the other envelope. I like to seal this and then I like to put tape across the address. I put tape over my address, the return address, and then also over the, the address that I'm shipping it to. And then the thing is, is you can print, like I've talked about, the PayPal shipping, and you can put it right on this, tape it up, you've already paid for the shipping, you can take it right to the post office and you can just put it in the drop. Easy peasy. So that's how I ship my cards. So in this video, we've talked about some important things. We've talked about a jeweler's loop. We've talked about a couple different scams. We've shown you a user that's been removed because of how they, uh, how they scammed people. We've talked about repacks and how they're predatory. I've talked about something that you can do as a seller to make sure that you ensure that you see when the item arrives, talking about tracking it and first class packaging. I've shown you how I package my cards. I hope this has been informative to you and I hope that it will allow you to use eBay and buy with confidence. I obviously didn't show you how to use eBay today. There's plenty of tutorials for that, but I'm showing you how I have avoided being screwed over using eBay to buy Magic the Gathering cards and get some really good deals. I just talked about some really good deals and I forgot that I didn't even show you any, but um, I'll just show you something. I've been buying like Pioneer staples and stuff like that. This item here, Magic the Gathering Rekindling Phoenix Rivals of Ixalan, Mythic Near Mint. I bought this item for $6.78. When you click on it, and this is just a newly listed item, you can see the date on the item. This is a pre-release foil rekindling phoenix. I got it. It was priced at $3. I bought it for $3. And uh, after shipping, it was $6.78. That's just one example off the top of my head. Um, I paid like $93 for borderless Oko uh, foil. But you could just buy things on the, on the low on eBay. You can just find, like, I bought Spire Bluff Canal for $5.95, right in the middle of Pioneer where it's blowing up and becoming a $10 card. And so you can see, and there's certain times to buy, I'll make a video on, like, when to buy certain cards and stuff like that. We're not going to cover it in this video. So I do hope this video has been informative. I hope that you can buy with confidence after watching. If there's anything specific that I didn't cover, please let me know in the comments. And if there's anything specific that you need to know about eBay that maybe I didn't mention, please consider also you know reaching out to us via Twitter or again in the comments I will get to every single comment I promise please consider liking please consider subscribing if there's someone out there that you think would benefit from this information please consider sharing it to them Joel and I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays we also have a patreon where you can support us as well make sure you check in with our bootleg MTG to keep up with what cards are being counterfeited and when I know I didn't cover everything but I hope this is at least a good starting point for you and your expeditions buying amazing luxury cardboard on the Bay of Ebes. The eBay. I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting, but dude, I'm tapped out. It's over. The video's done, okay? Go find something else to watch.